sonically then? Do these uh, songs, if, when you write them, do they kind of have, a, have an element that get go, goes through all of them, or are they really separate for you? Each is a separate project. No, at, at an early stage we, we see, oh, they, they, there's something cool, you know, which we could incorporate as a, as a trademark of the album a, a bit, uh, which we can keep. Um, could be, for example, a certain synthesizer sound, could mm. be a cool a string instrument or, or maybe something ethnic or so. Um, but again, it's, it's very, very flexible uh, when, when that happens or if, if it happens. And Haven uh, sonically is quite a, di a diverse record. The, the songs, um, well, you have ballads, you have. Uh, you tell me. Songs. Well, <laughs> no, no, I thought so. The, 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 well, yeah, I, th I thought so. So, is that something you are aware of then, not to repeat yourself too much, or? I have more the problem that I think if if uh, if, if it would be only to me if I would like lead the whole production or so, right. it would become too progressive, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, usually Sasha, our producer. He, he a little bit is downsizing my my uh, some of my ideas. There's a lot of uneven stuff in there. Not not because I need to show off with that stuff, but because I, in in that moment I write it, mm -hmm. and then later I figure out, oh, uh, that's a weird measure and and uh, or weird sound. Um, Do you so, keep these ideas? Yeah, uh, because. Usually I love them all, you know, <laughs> and uh, if, if it's getting kicked out, um, then I collect them. I have a special file for that on my, and, and usually I, not always, but I try to use it later again for different band, different record. Um, yeah. is, is this something that happened recently, that this progressive, because the band has always been a bit progressive, but you joined in 2005, I believe? Yeah. So, uh, has it gotten a bit more each time you make a record, or that it got more progressive? Well, for, for you, the the ideas. Uh, no, I don't think so. It's uh, it's it's as I said. Our uh, this is why we also have a producer, mm. um, and he is taking those things and putting it a bit back to shape. You know. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, well, when it comes to, because we, we've kind of touched upon the lyrics, when it comes to the lyrics, uh, do to, you feel, do to what? To the lyrics. Oh, do you yeah. feel, because you mentioned it, it always comes last for you and you, you, uh, you are more con concerned with the, with the music in that oh. way. What are your thoughts on the lyrics afterwards then? Do, do you find them important to the music or when you listen to it, do you just listen to the music? I find it super important. I mean, um, you know, some of my favorite favorite bands of the past I can't listen to today anymore because I changed my my taste. You know, right. uh, but good lyrics I keep in my mind my my whole life, and I can you know some bands I'm I'm really a big fan of still because they have great lyrics or what I what I thought back then what great lyrics were. Um, if some some band have good music but like really bad lyrics, and that happens quite often, mm. it's really hard for me to listen okay. to. And so, so, what appealed to you uh, to the lyrics uh, of Haven? What what did you find in it? Uh, I mean, the with? biggest part comes from uh, Tommy. Mm -hmm. Then some stuff from Thomas and me. Um, Tommy and me, we were uh, a lot on the. Uh, it's a so it's a uh, software called uh, VST Connect okay. from Steinberg, uh, which I'm also promoting. Um, it's like a Skype for musicians, okay. you know. So Tommy and me, we worked every every other day uh, over the internet, and we also worked on lyrics. Uh, and that's sometimes really the hardest part because you have a melody, and you you would like to go on with the music, but you have to find some lyrics, else you can finish this mm. whole part. And that takes really long. We work on some sentences for sometimes hours. You know, it's uh, until it, it. It's not just about the meaning or that it's kind of interesting or intellectual or something. It's it has to flow with the music right. and and then a whole sentence and then a whole chorus and a verse. That takes half of the time, I would say. Yeah. And on the record, there are also some guest appearance, uh, mm. appearances. Uh, one of them being Charlotte uh, from Delane. What kind of what made you decide on these guest appearances? 
Um, basically, these and all the uh, guest appearances of the past were always personal connections. Okay. Uh, they were touring with us. Uh, maybe support bands, maybe we were supporting them, like Nightwish. Uh, and uh, on the, during the Nightwish tour, we experienced Troy as one of the funniest guys we've ever met. You know, he's, he's like a pro magician. <laughs> and uh, so he was immediately into it when he, when he listened to the demo of Under Grey Skies, that ballad on our album now. Uh, Alyssa is with us now since a couple of tours, even before she joined Arch Enemy as a singer. Uh, so that's, that's the usual path. When you write these things, do you have somebody else in mind then for, for the vocals? Mm, no. Or does it come later when comes, you think? comes usually later. Okay. Usually Tommy puts, as a, Tommy Karavik, our singer, puts uh, some stuff on the, on the music. Mm -hmm. And then we think, hey, this could be so great if you have a duet with a female singer. So who could that, could, could that be? Thinking, thinking, and then Charlotte uh, came came to our mind. She could, and we sent the demo to her, and it like fit really well. And that's not always the case. And then this is the second record with uh, Tommy as mm -hmm. a as a uh, as a frontman. Did it make it easier this time around? Ah, uh, it was maybe more established, you know. And uh, he, I know uh, the very first songs we wrote for Silverthorn back then. Tommy was more passive. He was right. more. Uh, he was with me in Germany, for example, at the very beginning, and, and I remember him to be very quiet and more waiting, you know, uh, trying to get into the groove. And this time he, he was, yeah, he was much more uh, self. How do you say that in, in English? Like self-aware, or you know, his. He was sh pretty sure about what what he was supposed to do, and he hit the Camelot flow really well. Mm -hmm. And did it change the way you work with him? Because, well, you had the previous singer as well, you were there with the previous singer, but did it change the dynamic in any, in any way? Uh, uh, in Having Tommy coming in? Uh, compared to Roy? Well, for instance, uh, but, but just, just the way music was written when he came in. Yeah, because the songwriting team changed, and therefore uh, we had a lot of personal meetings, he, him coming over to Germany, uh, Thomas was, of course, coming over from the U.S. Then a lot of internet sessions also, um, even if we prefer the personal meetings, of mm. course. Um, of course, it was similar in the past, um, but yeah, people are different and therefore the constellation was different. Okay. Uh, finally, this is a bit of an unfair question, but do you, do you have a favorite track on the album? Um, I would say right now it's Here's to the Fall. Okay. Uh, that's probably, I, I expect that it's gonna be named very rarely by fans. Okay. It's only orchestra and voice. And uh, it was very special to me already when, when I wrote the orchestration, mm -hmm. uh, because it's kind of an unusual feel to it. I don't know if you, if you listen to it. Mm -hmm. and, and Tommy came up with such a great vocal line and, uh, and I'm, I'm getting those little goosebumps every time.